Welcome to another episode of Nathan Builds Robots. Today we're at Formnext 2023 in Frankfurt and I'm talking with Omer from Coprint. So they've got a Kickstarter right now and we're gonna learn a little bit more about their products. It looks like it's some kind of AMS unit. Firstly, let's mention about today. As you know, we are live on Kickstarter and we offer different bundle solutions for the backers. So you are seeing the right bundle for the Marlin-based 3D printer, right? So the bundle comes with the pad, four extruders and chroma hat. Up top you've got four different extruders, so I assume this is to feed your four different colors of filament into the print head here. That's right. It's coming right from the bottom and we are feeding the filaments. The hat has actually a direct drive system on top of it as well. So currently you are seeing a five different extruders mounted up on the Creality Ender 3V2. And you're saying you can get up to... It's up to 20 colors. This is the module we created, extended chroma module. So it has four extruder slots right there in case you want to add up external extruders and you just plug it to your system, to the pad itself. And then once you plug up the extruders here, you'll be able to have like eight colors. The limit is four for this. Okay. So with the four standard here and for ECMs, it goes to 20 colors. Are there any plans to sell this as like a standalone item? Yes, yeah, sure. It looks like it's just four stepper drivers exactly. that can be powered over a clipperized USB port. Exactly. There's been some printers that I've been working on and I'm like, I wish I had more stepper drivers on this board. So just having a brick like that where you can add a bunch of extra motors onto exactly. a design could be pretty fun. We have aimed to sell the standalone. Actually, all of the items can be sold standalone as well. When you're feeding a filament, I guess one of these gets activated and it pushes the filament into the tool head. And then is it driving both of the extruders simultaneously to exactly. put the filament? This one is pulling so it can take it back to the nozzle. And once it's pulling it off, this grabs it and pulls back. So we use force in here and here for that one. Then is there any limitation to the types of printers that you can use on this? Like, I mean, the, the Bowden tubes here look like they're set up for maybe this size of machine or maybe like a 300 by 300. But what if you have like a super large printer? Well, that's a good question as well. But the thing is that we will send Teflon tubes for a standard size, right? So in case, for example, let's say that you want to put that on the Elego Giga one, right? Yeah. The Teflon tubes won't be enough. So Teflon tubes are reachable. So in case you want to do some customization or you want to put it on a different printer, you can add up def Teflon tubes to your system. But the standard sizes, like you can see here, will be sent by the packages. The Chroma Pad here is basically running on Clipper software, the Clipper screen, but we kind of revised it. We made add up some different features on it, so it can print in multi-materials and also it can control up to eight different printers in a single panel. So basically it's kind of like a Sonic Pad and it's designed to set up uh, where you kind of a running clipper on a non-clipperized machine. Exactly, that's true. And also it gives you a remote access as well. All right, now let's talk about this other printer because um, it looks like it's taking advantage of the clipper computer that's already on the machine. Yep. So you have no need for this sonic pad-like device. It's just kind of the smaller box that's doing stepper motors and uh, I guess driving the tool head. Exactly. This is basically designed for the clipper-based 3D printers because they already have the system inside of it, such as Elego Neptune 4 Pro. So you don't need any additional control from the Chroma Pad. So all the features that Chroma Pad allows you to do is also inside of the key CM. Therefore, you can do anything from the panel here or the remote control here by adding up macros. So you will just have to plug this and it will control your clipper-based system. Okay. As you can see here. And uh, right now it's printing a purge block. So yep. I've noticed that there's no pile of poop. It's just purging all of that material into a solid object in the side. Can you explain why you would do that instead of doing something more like what Bamboo Lab is doing where they purge uh, like on the outside? Well, firstly, uh, I want to show the inside of the head. So in, inside of the head, we have a servo motor that controls filament cutter. The main problem, the main issue here is that when it's changing the colors, when it pulls the one and puts the next one in. In the heat block, the previous color gets cold. You know, it's not that heat anymore. So mm. it kind of gets bigger and bigger and clogs the nozzle. Okay. Therefore, we added up a filament cutter there. So we clean that part. So the upcoming filament can go through easily. It doesn't poop because like the setups of the different customers change. In Bamboo, it's one solid printer, right? So they can add up anywhere they want. So they made it on the mass production, but here, you can mount up this to Elego, Creality, as you can see, Prusa, or whatever you want. So the pooping can be an issue when the printer size, the bed size change, so we don't want that. So there's no place to poop. 
Yeah, and then you'd have to figure out a solution for every different printer of like a, di a different box where it can exactly. dump that out. That's true. I think it's a little bit cleaner to just do a purge block. Um, it can affect the amount of print area you have, but you know, I think I think there's a trade-off for each solution. So, for example, that is what we designed. This is the real print. Okay. And this is the purge block. I kind of like the way this purge block print looks. <laughs> Same here. I mean, I like it a lot. It actually has like a really cool yeah. color scheme on exactly. the front. Exactly. It still has some place on the bat, that's for sure. But since it doesn't poop and it cleans the the previous filament in, so the purge block is very smaller compared to our first product set. You're not just selling a multi-material system that's feeding different colors into the printer. You're also selling the entire print head, extruder, and hot end. So those have to be like pretty well featured. Well, the main purpose while creating the product set, we just didn't want to focus on the multi-material side. We also wanted to focus on speed because you know that the new coming printers, the speed is a uh, like, uh, it's so important for the consumers. They are looking out for solutions which goes with the high speed. So we want all the products that work in harmony, so the hot end flow should be high. The duration of the color changing is very fast. It takes like 20 to 25 seconds. So we want the full speed on the whole product set. We have a hot end that we incorporated with Fetius. So the hot end can go up to 350 degrees. Oh, nice. And that allows you to print up PLA, ABS, TPU, PET-G. So you, want to have, you can print up like TPU on the credits and their 3v2. That's okay. a good modification. Yeah, Fetus makes some good stuff. So, exactly. Like if you're starting from a stock printer and upgrading this, the hot end will definitely be better. But what about the extruder that you're using there? We are currently using a standard extruder that we use from our local partner. But here we uh, we didn't decide who to work with yet. I mean, we are taking up the opportunities. We tried out like more than six or seven extruder. It's not decided yet, but it will be soon announced. Okay, but you're planning on using something pretty high quality. Exactly. Dual gear direct drive. Exactly. And then you've got like a, uh, a PCB there. It looks like it's a custom design that's just a breakout board that facilitates all the connections. And then you've got a BL touch on there, and it looks like a pretty decent part cooling fan. So what kind of volumetric flow rates can you push? Have you done that kind of testing yet? We pushed it only 36 volt meters per second, yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, that's probably one of the advantages of working yeah, with Fetus to exactly. develop a high flow nozzle They port. do great high flow hot ends. And then part cooling, it looks like it'll be plenty sufficient. It, as long as you're using something more than what comes on a stock Creality printer, those tiny like 40, 10 blower fans. It looks like you've got a 40, 20 fan exactly. with a decent fan duct there. Fan, yeah. Exactly, we have two fans and one is cooling the module back there. So we have actually two stock fans and one cooling the hot end inside. And these are kind of like advanced prototypes. So the final model will be slightly different. What are some of the changes that you're planning on making to this kit before you release it? For example, in the final prototype, we are aiming to change the pin head right there because it kind of looks old, you know, and you have to fix it with the tapes and so on. Therefore, uh, there will be four cables going to the pin, so the pin slot will be smaller compared to this one. In the mass production, once it's going to the customers and our backers, uh, that's, that will be changed. Okay. And also, uh, here we, you see the head is also the MGF. It's a prototype. So in the serial mass production, it will be plastic injection. And uh, so just to touch on that cable a little bit more, is that going to be a USB-C type cable or maybe like a 4-pin Molex or something? It's, it will be 4-pin Molex, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Molex is a, like a nice reliable cable. Exactly. The, the nice thing about USB-C is you'd be able to just swap it out with whatever length you need. Th that's but, true, but all of the R&D we made is like uh, to go is for the 4-pin access, so we will... Right now, it seems like one of the better multi-material units on the market is going to be the Bamboo Lab AMS. Okay. So how do you guys differentiate yourselves from that? That's a good question, Nathan, thanks. The Bamboo AMS... I think it's a great system as well, but they are, you know that it's only compatible with their own 3D printers. What we want here is that we want to share our open source software and we want to make it public, right? And because of that, we wanted to complete whole set, such as the extruders and the hat. We are not producing the 3D printer. The consumers that use like Creality, Elago, Artillery, or Anycubic, like any of the printers, we are almost compatible with the 90% of the printers in the market. We are trying out a different printers in our R&D at our office as well. After a while, we go to the old ones because they are durable, right? So we want to show the consumers that you don't have to forget about your old printers. They are still here. So one thing I want to talk about is you guys are a Kickstarter, so you haven't released the product yet and you don't have the final design. 
but can you say anything about the type of testing that you're doing to make sure that you get reliable results with your printers when you of finally course. deliver? So uh, basically, we have more than like a hundred printers at our R&D department. Like, I mean, what I mean by the hundred printers are like we don't have like 50 Elego Neptune 4 Pros or 50 Creality NR3 V2s. We have different brands and different printers of them. So currently, uh, we are compatible with 90 percent of the printers in the market. We are currently trying Delta printers. If we can fix that, we will update our backers on the Kickstarter as well. But currently, if you have a Creality 3D printer. A Lego 3D printer, artillery, any cubic, or any brand that seems like it, we are compatible with it. Hopefully, we will give them a news about the Delta 3D printers. We are our engineering team is at home trying them, still testing. Yeah. Uh, but if also that happens, we will make an update about this. So you'll have a list of printers that you're compatible with. Yes, exactly. Okay. We have a list of printers that are we are compatible with, and people can reach out to that in our website. And also we have a setup wizard at our website, so it, the product set kind of make, like, it can be a bit complicated once you first look at it, it kind of looks like a puzzle. But our product wizard says you that, for example, you will choose your 3D printer, you will choose the model, you will choose the brand, and you will choose what you want. If you want on the speed, or you want multi-material printing as well, then it will tell you which products you need. So people can check that setup wizard as well. Product compatibility includes like software and also mounting hardware because a lot of these printers have different uh, hole mounting patterns. Exactly. So for that part, uh, you know, the different printers use different rail systems, so it changes as well. Hat can adapt very easily, but to mount it, you need different rail systems and different parts. We want to make sure that everyone fits it well, so we will release STL files that people has to print. For example, let's say that you have a Prusa and you want to mount this, right? So you will check our website, find the exact STL file, just print it out, and once your package comes in, you will just plug the back on the pad and then that's it. All right. Then you will just mount it up. Cool. And it looks like you've got all the filaments feeding in from underneath the table. Yep. So I assume that, I mean, that's a pretty clean setup, first of all, because it gets the, uh, the filament spools out of the way so you don't have to see them when it's, everything's set up but also it kind of acts as a buffer. I mean, you don't need a ton of buffer because the amount of retraction is only a couple inches there. Yeah. Um, and I guess that all gets taken up by this, uh, this open Ex area in open the back. Area, yeah. Everyone has its own habits, right? Someone likes to put it on the wall or someone likes to mount it up on the back side of the... Here, we are at the <laughs> exhibition, so we didn't have that much spot to fold the filaments in, so we just mounted up on the bottom of the floor. But yeah, I mean, you can use it on the back or you can use it on the front, you can use it on the vault, so it kind of depends on you. Grip here will allow it to do, do that, so. Um, one thing we didn't mention was uh, filament runout detection. Do you mm -hmm. have any solution for that or? Yeah, we have a filament sensor inside of the tool hat, so then people can understand if the filament is out or no. I think you might want one like up here so it detects when this runs out versus... Well, currently we didn't do that because like it also increases the cost and so on as well. We wanted to go with the optimal solution, but as an upgrade, thank you for your feedback. Okay. One last question I wanted to ask you was, what's your attitude towards open source? Well, we completely support open source. I mean, we already have our files on the, our GitHub account, so people can reach out to our like, config configurations, all of the data we have. Uh, in our page, we also mentioned that we completely support the open source and we value that. So we aim to continue like that for the whole product sets we will have in the future. We don't have the final product here yet, but I just wanted to introduce you guys to the team that's working on this project. So if you want to check out their Kickstarter, I think it's open for another uh, couple of days. 23 days, I believe, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we stop at the 2nd of December, so we still have a couple of days to go. Other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to ask via like Kickstarter page mail us, send us through the contact form, social media. We are here to answer your questions. Great. Well, thanks for uh, Thank talking to us today, Omar. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks for coming. Yeah, have a good rest of the you show. Too. Thank you. I